Yeah. What, right, um, Rochester? Right no. Boys have, like, training and fencing and jumping, but, um, where is everybody? I can't see anything they write. They wrote. Okay. So the question on the table is, if you were to go to your doctor today, and your doctor told you that they have a new HIV prevention option available to you, and that option included taking an HIV antiretroviral medication once a day for the rest of your life as a means of preventing transmission of HIV, would you do it? Who wants to go first? No, because it would mess with me psychologically. How so? I mean, I'm HIV negative, so I don't know. I guess I would feel some kind of way taking HIV. Anybody, I guess, medicine for HIV positive people. And like, what if I have partners or family over and they go in my bathroom and they go in my medicine cabinet to grab some headache pills or some cortate or something, and they're like, bitch, why you got HIV medicine in your cabinet? <laughs> I would be like, girl, and then I got to go through this whole spiel about, I, I just can't. I'd rather just stick to the tried and true, use condoms, and, and just be, you know, proactive about my health. It's kind of up in the air with me because it would mess with me, for, like, psychologically. But then I know in the back of my mind I don't have it. But it's just that one day of building a resistance to it just because I missed a day, it would scare me. The risk of you possibly missing out days, uh, missing a day far outweighs the reward of being HIV negative and knowing that you're safe. Yeah. Okay. Did you, you, you spoke about the, um, the resistance and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Still, no, nah, probably not because some, you know, sometimes I skip days when I have to take vitamins or like antibiotics or anything. So I would probably just be like, you know. I kind of agree with what Diamond said. Um, like if I can't remember to take medicine on a day-to-day -day basis as it is, I know I'm not going to remember to take that every single day even if it falls into a routine because you never know what's going on you might wake up late and just have to just dash out the house because half the time we everybody leaves the house without even eating breakfast so like and then you forget to take your pill one day and next day you know you build up resistance to it and end up what if it was a nighttime dosage some people I just well I that's the same thing because like sometimes I go home I don't even eat I just lay down next thing you know I wake up it's three o'clock in the morning and I just roll back over go back to sleep and wake up when I'm supposed to. Hmm. That's worse okay. than those. Does health insurance play a role in your decision making around taking this pill for the rest of your life once well, a day? Well, not really. Well, right now Dr. Brown said I don't own mom's health insurance as long as I'm in school, but even afterwards, it wouldn't really affect it if, you know, if, if it was covered by health insurance. If I did decide to take it and it was still covered by health insurance, I would still take it. But if I didn't have insurance, I wouldn't want to pay that $1,000 a month. For one pill, for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Currently, no, because I'm on my mother's health insurance as long as I'm in school, and I'll be in school for a long time, so I'm just, I guess, by circumstance, I'm Oh, all right. I'm, I don't have to worry about that. So what about after school? Because we're talking about the rest of your life. If you decide to do this. Um, pro I would probably just stick to the traditional method. Okay. Yeah. Health insurance a factor? Yeah. Kind of because, like, I already had to, like, pay insurance. So it's like $1,000 on top of, like, my other bills, cell phone, rent, RGB, food, like basically like cost of living. That would factor into it, but the overall thing would be if I miss today, girl, I might get it. <laughs> like, it's just the knowing that, okay, well, it's Monday. I've been taking them since all last week. It's Monday. Um, I woke up late. Oh my god, I left the house. Like, what if I take it? Like, my thing is, like, what if I take it later on? So, if you didn't take it the same time, but you varied on time. So, let's say you're supposed to take it 9 o'clock at night, you fell asleep, mm -hmm. 
wake up three o'clock in the morning. If you took it right away at three o'clock in the morning, would it have the same impact in terms of resistance? Right. Okay. Well, that's a question that we may be able to get answered later. Yeah, because if it does that, then sure. Okay. But it sounds like as a whole, among the three individuals featured in this recording, that the sentiment is overwhelmingly negative in terms of taking an HIV um, medication once a day for the rest of your life, even if it meant preventing um, the acquisition of HIV in the future. I think um, part of it is that, that, that uh, well, some of what influenced my stance on the issue is the taboo associated with HIV. And, I, you know, that's just, I guess that's just another form of conditioning that I'm trying to get over. I don't want to be perceived as being HIV positive if people were to see my meds. Like the meds in my my, my uh, cabinet. But also it's just like... I, and then like and then another side of the coin is just like I'm terrible with like pills. So it's like I don't want to start taking these prophylactics and then... I forget and then boom, now I could possibly be resistant. So just to keep my way, just keep myself out of that, it's just like, girl, just stick to the tried and true. Uh, like gay birth control. Gay birth control? <laughs> yeah. Work. Condoms or the pills? Um, The pills. Okay. You know, because, you know, girls, they take their birth control, but, you know, if you miss a couple days, there's that chance of you still getting pregnant. Okay. So you kind of look at it the same way with, um, with uh, taking the um, antiretrovirals. Even though this is a different kind of baby we're talking about. Either way, you get a baby if you miss the pill. Okay. <laughs> yes, you miss baby. just enough. Yes, we get the baby. <laughs> There's two different babies. Who's to say you couldn't get two babies in one? Okay. Ooh. Anything that could be said or anything that could be done at this particular moment that would have you change your mind about um, taking a pill once a day for the rest of your life to prevent acquisition to HIV. If my body didn't become resistant, if I missed a day or two by mistake. That, that's it. That's about it. Because I would take what he said. Like, there's no other factors that really turn me off about it besides that. But like, if, I'm, if I miss a day, there's my baby. Oh. If it's proven that it works. Proven that it works? Yeah. yeah. There are clinical trials um, that we currently have access to in terms of the outcomes and those mm -hmm. pilot testing studies mm -hmm. that show that this is, a, this is a pretty effective model and one that really strongly needs to be considered. So 99.8%. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to quantify it. <laughs> But I'm going to say that there are really strong recommendations coming out from government that suggest this is the way to go. Okay. Any final thoughts? No. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. No, I'm not really. That's it. I'm, I'm just going to stick to the tried and true. The tried and true? Yeah. Gotcha.